Rosso back, looking back, looking back. And it's gone! A walk-off two-run home run by Tate Clemens, and the Pilots win it! Hi there, and welcome to the return of Portside of the Pilots. I'm your host, Adam Lindman. It's been a little while, but starting with this episode, Ports Out of the Pilots will air once a month, which you can view on YouTube and our other social media platforms. The format will be the same, and it's still your chance to see feature stories on the pilots, recaps and previews, interviews, and plenty more. We start today with a look back at a historic fall for University of Portland Athletics as four pilot programs reach the postseason, which includes the volleyball team, who played in the postseason for the first time in program history. The pilots began the year with 12 straight wins, a program record, and they received votes in the coaches poll for the first time ever. First year head coach Jeff Baxter led the team to 20 wins, which were also a program division one record, and they reached the quarterfinals of the inaugural National Invitational Volleyball Championship. Women's soccer had a turnaround season, which was the first under the guidance of new head coach Michelle French. French led the Pilots to 11 wins, more than doubling the previous year's total, and the Pilots exploded for 30 goals, nearly tripling the goal output from 2017. Individually, Taryn Rees scored 15 goals, which ranked 7th nationally and were the most goals scored by a Pilot since 2009. The men's soccer team reached the playoffs for the second time in the past three years, and head coach Nick Carlinvoit and the Pilots played their first home postseason match since 2002 which was a 1-0 win over UCLA. Portland reached as high as number seven in the national rankings, and Benji Michelle became the first pilot to be named an All-American by the country's coaches in 16 years. And of course, we can't forget about the cross-country teams who both had an epic fall. The Portland women qualified for the NCAA championships as a team for just the second time ever, and in frigid conditions in Wisconsin, the pilots delivered on the national stage. We are on site at the Thomas Zimmer Championship Cross Country Course, home of the Wisconsin Badgers and the site of the 2018 NCAA Division I Cross Country Championships. Right now, 29 degrees. Yeah, the first time for snow on the course in almost 30 years. We should mention that. This isn't just a manicured golf course where you run down fairways. It is going to be a very, very competitive, deep, interesting race today. I think a special thing about this team was uh, unity. When, when you have 29 women who are all on board with, with working together to accomplish these things, even if they're not all gonna get to run at the, the conference meet or the national meet. Having that mentality, it's, it's a great starting point. You have to have the training as well and, and talented people and you have to have things go right. But having that mentality is, is a huge uh, starting point for our success. So going into the season we had a goal to be top 10 at nationals and so that was something that was really in our minds throughout the season. It's been building for a few years and I think the girls previously set like a very strong precedence for our goals and trying to achieve them. There was like snow on the ground it just seemed like kind of what I'm used to when I ran back home. Just like having all these big names around, just warming up right there beside you pretty much. I think when you get on the line and you're running with six other girls, just you feel like you're running for them, not just for yourself. You kind of just gives you a sense of calm that you do this training with them every single day and you can get out there and race with them just like any other day. So it really took the nerves off, I think for me and for everyone else. Finishing the best place in school history it was like a really, really great memory that I honestly think I'll have forever. Uh, yeah, it was really special. Um, when I heard we were 12 at the end, I kind of teared up a little bit. This was like new, like we had just done something really amazing and I was just so proud of the team. We all ran tough and gave it our best effort and it really showed in the results. Definitely felt well deserved, not just the people running. like. Everyone really contributed this year and had the mindset. The awesome thing about it is that we all finished and we really didn't know how we placed, but we all knew that we gave everything we had. Hearing the results, we all just like exploded with excitement um, just because we really surpassed our expectations. And that was just like those moments when you realize that you achieved something that you never expected you could. The whole team, everybody who's on the roster has an effect on the culture of the team and the day-to-day -day mentality. And if you have a bunch of people who are really positive and excited about what everybody's doing and willing to work hard, 
then, then that affects everybody. Well, I'm actually new to the University of Portland, so um, I wasn't really sure what to expect when I got here, but for workouts, we'd have like multiple different groups going, and, and whenever we would pass each other, we'd always just be cheering each other on, and even though we're like tired ourselves and out of breath, there's always people like saying, you know, you, you got this, and good job, and whatever, and just having that like positive atmosphere made a huge difference. And the team there are 29 girls and everyone is training for the same goals. And it's just amazing to, to train for this same goal and not just for ourselves. Going into this season, I remember saying, I don't even really care how I do, so long as if I can tr go into training and do every workout, and even if that means helping someone else out, I just really wanted the team to do so well. Probably November last year, Coach Ian said he set the goals for the following year, and I think the team didn't even really need to talk about it that much. We probably talked about it one time, but everyone just knew we had this common shared goal. Becca Howard had an incredible season for us. She's improved a ton, and, and she's somebody who, who has bought in to this sort of culture and atmosphere that we have. Then all of a sudden she goes from, uh, I think 117th last year at regionals to 46th this year at regionals. 110th at nationals as our number four runner, which, which was one of the best number fours uh, in, in the country, in the national meet. Same thing with Eva Richardson. E Eva was incredible, so reliable this season. Last year she was uh, in the 50s at the regional meet, this year 19th. Finished 57th at nationals, very close to being All-American, just a few seconds from All-American. And, and that's incredible. I don't think anybody would have would have predicted that. And I don't think she uh, expected that. I think she sort of surprised herself. That's a big part of our program is, is developing people. Sometimes it takes longer than you want and it's, it's maybe a year or it's two years, but that's something that, that we really pride ourselves on is, is can we develop runners and get them to a higher level than they've been at before. In the past, you know, there might've been some standout runners, but it's really cross country is a team sport and it's about everyone coming together to contribute. So um, we were lucky enough this year to just have the depth to really um, lead to such a high finish. So I think kind of going forward that the depth in our team is something that's really encouraging and there's just so many girls waiting to step up and do the same again. All of us have just become best friends and we do everything together basically and just having people to run with every day that motivate you and want you to be better. That's something I'm really gonna miss. And just having Ian, who makes every day fun and it makes you want to go to practice. And same with all the girls. You know, it doesn't have to be the, the fanciest school with the, you know, the fanciest facilities and the most recognizable name. It's more about a place where they're gonna do things the right way. They're gonna develop runners. And we wanna help everybody improve and run your best at the most important meets. I think we all really exceeded our own expectations on that day um, and thinking about where we were my freshman year coming in to where we are now far exceeds where I ever thought I'd be as an individual and as a team and I think even two years ago we went to the nationals and realized just how big of a meet it is and we placed 22nd I believe and I think we couldn't even really comprehend getting close to that top 10 and to just go and do it on that day was super special. And to have that be my final cross country race was just so exciting. Anything you want to add? Go pilots. <laughs> the men's cross country team was also in Wisconsin in search of yet another magical season. Throughout its history, the program has put together a remarkable run of success. And this year is no different as the pilots followed another West region title with another podium finish. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to be here for five years and really see just how the culture has changed. A somewhat individualistic culture to like this very cohesive one team, one family, you know, brotherhood type of culture. And everyone feels included and that's what you want. You want that safety net that everyone is included. And I can tell you every day walking in to practice, the energy was high. It's hard to put into words really, just how, it, how that felt. And it's something I'm, I'm not gonna forget forever. When we came in, the team was obviously very good, but I don't think that everyone was necessarily on the same page. And I think I kind of saw that and I saw how the team has progressed over these past couple of years. And then after last year when we got second, I think that kind of woke people up and said, if we focus together as a team on this, then 
there's a really good chance that we could do something special this year, next year, and the year after. I've only been here for a few months, and I feel like we're like closer than brothers. I wouldn't have wanted a better team. Like This is like the perfect team over the next four years or so. I don't know how we're going to get much closer. <laughs> I thought coming here would be maybe a feeling of being left out a little bit or being the outsider, but I didn't feel like that at all. So just from on the first day off, they really like got me to join the family pretty much. I think the thing with team culture is that it really started last year, uh, back in 2017. And uh, when I was fortunate enough to join the staff when I came in, one of the first things I asked the guys was, you know, what is our identity and what are we about as a team? I think it's really important to feel like you're a part of something. And it was Caleb who came into the office probably two weeks after and said, some of the guys, we've been talking and we want this to be a selfless team and we want that word to identify who we are. Ever since, it's just been about reinforcing that selfless mentality. I think the culture of the team is more everyone working together as one. It's not about who's the top guy or who's the last guy. It's all about how many people we can get to run as fast as they can. The big thing with RC is that he doesn't give up on anyone really. So whether you're the first guy, 40th guy, he just really wants everyone to do their best. And I think that's just so different from a lot of other coaches in the NCAA. What he's been doing is just incredible. And I really am appreciative of that. BYU is getting fourth. Oh wow! Yeah. Wisconsin is getting third. And you like Rob Connor? I do like him. I love Rob Connor. Portland <laughs> is going to take down Northern oh, Arizona. Wow! Not unanimous. Wow. RC is probably one of the few coaches in the country that generally care about every single one of his athletes. And when you're training and racing for more than just yourself, you're going to often find that you have a lot more in you. I think that's just something special about him, and something that's special about this program that really almost anywhere else that you wouldn't get. RC is very unique in the way he works with every runner on the team and then overall with the team. He's not focused on just the top guy, he's focused from our first guy to our very last guy. I'm buying Portland because I think Rob Connor knows something that we don't. He likes playing, being the underdog and, you know, I'm buying Portland, I'm buying him. Last year and this year were unique in that the mindset was a mindset of we want to run as if we're trying to win this thing. And we knew that Northern Arizona and BYU were going to be hard to beat. But if you have the mindset that you're running with purpose and that you're running on a mission, then you have a shot. Last year was my first year running at the Nationals. And I've ran hundreds of races through my career. And there's just nothing like stepping on the line, knowing that this is the best of the best. What I like to think about with Nationals is just that it's this cool story that we get to tell. We were strong and ready for the Nationals meet and at the same time we we're excited about the weather that was given to us. You know, it's this cool story of like it snowed two inches the night before and everyone's out there just warming up in the snow and the cold. I think most of us were prepared for conditions that were tough. We've been training in tough conditions as well. So probably other teams would have benefited from warmer weather. At one point you had to shut out the things you cannot control and just uh, do the things you can't control. Portland's actually in pretty good position. They have six in the top 60 right now. Yeah, and if you look at Portland, right now their places are 22, 23, 24, 36, 43, and it's a six-second gap between them. It's definitely been the hardest thing I've ever had to do in general. So I think everyone had to put out everything they had um, in order to get that team result. And I think if we didn't have that team effort there, that team spirit, it would just be so much harder to finish there. You know, when the energy is so high, it just makes everything so much easier. You know, when I know that the guys are watching back home and they're rooting for us and how can you give up when those sorts of things are happening? So it really helped push me individually and to get those, those few wins was really fun and it was really driven towards giving it everything I can for this group because they're doing so much to help me get better myself. Our ultimate goal still is to win a national championship. The future is only going to keep getting better. I think we'll keep attracting a higher level of athlete. It would be really cool to try and win that thing here in the next year or two. The time of my life was these past three months. I had so much fun doing that. And, you know, running from everyone, one to 40, day in and day out was just a blast. And I, uh, I'm very fortunate and blessed to have been a part of it. I think the thing that excites me the most about the future is seeing all these young guys who are coming in and they have so much talent and they have so much 
drive to be good. Nick and I want to let them know that everybody around you wants you to succeed. We're all family here and you know I've said a couple of times in workouts that you know hard work is easier with family. My only advice is buy into this program, buy into the guys around you, and buy into coach at the same time. It's your story to write and keep doing what we're doing and do it better. There is no rest for the pilots as Lauren LaRocco began the indoor track season with yet another school record in the 5,000 meters, topping her own previous record by 17 seconds. Her teammate Taryn Rawlings broke the school record in the mile when she mobbed around the track in a time of 4 minutes 36 seconds in Seattle last weekend. Speaking of miles, Logan Orndorff is officially the fastest pilot ever in that distance. At the UW Indoor Preview, Orndorff ran the program's first ever sub four minute mile. The very next meet, Orndorff ran the second fastest 3,000 meter ever by a pilot. Since the University of Portland is located in the craft beer capital of the world, it's only fitting that the pilots have their own IPA. Recently, two alums got together and decided to collaborate on a beer. The result of that teamwork is, of course, known as the Co-Pilot IPA. Oh, I mean, this is great. Steve and I have, ever since I started my brewery, we've kind of talked about it um, and just how much fun it would be for us to do this for the University of Portland. He was class of 2009, I was class of 2010. We just thought that it would be fun to have an alumni IPA uh, join the tap list there. I think one cool thing about this beer is we were actually able to collaborate with University of Portland too to sort of curate the sort of beer that they would like to have at the Pilot House and basketball games and soccer games. So we talked in depth, Steve and I and UP about uh, the style of beer we wanted and how that beer would taste and yeah, we're really proud of what's going to turn out. We all talked about the Northwest style IPA being kind of what UP would really want to represent, being so Northwest local and stuff like that. I think one thing about University of Portland is it's a community, and so one thing that Steve and I thought about was we're so much of a family and so much of a community that why wouldn't you know two alumni that own breweries like make the beer for UP? You can get the Co-Pilot IPA at men's basketball home games, and here's a look at the remaining contest at the Child Center this season. Next week, the Pilots are at home against BYU on Thursday night for an 8 p.m. tip-off, and the LMU Lions visit just two days later. After that, San Francisco comes to the bluff on Saturday, February 16th, and the Pilots close the regular season by hosting Santa Clara for senior night on March 2nd. The Portland women have five home games remaining, beginning with the number 13 Gonzaga Bulldogs on February 9th. The Pilots host BYU on Thursday the 14th, San Diego visits on the 16th, LMU comes to North Portland on the 28th, and the finale is against Pepperdine on March 2nd. Benji Michelle is the latest Portland men's soccer player heading to MLS after the junior forward signed a homegrown contract with Orlando City SC. The Orlando native will forego his final year of eligibility to join the pro side, and he's the third pilot in the past two years to get picked up by an MLS franchise, following Paul Christensen and Chris Reeves. Senior goalkeeper Kenan Weeks is also heading to the pros as he recently signed with Phoenix Rising FC of the USL Championship. It's a crazy feeling to look at where I was coming into University of Portland and now to realize that dream of being able to play as a professional afterwards is, is pretty special to me. Worked really, really hard to just try and give myself a chance. That's all we can really ask for is a chance and wouldn't be possible without my time here at UP and the lessons I learned. And so it's definitely bittersweet leaving a place that changed me so much as a player, but this is just kind of another step in that process to try and develop and be the best guy I can be. That's what makes part of UP uh, so special is that there's such a small community here that you really get to know people and, and get to learn values and, and things that, you know, other places you don't get to learn that are going to carry with me for a long time, not just in soccer, but, but in life. And those things, you know, like patience and, and hard work and character that are uh, as important, if not more important than, than talent on the field. You know, I'm real excited, but hungry. It's weird, this transition from college into the pros, you go from 
you know, being a senior and, and being playing every game and sort of having that locked down to now you go in as a rookie and you're right back down to the bottom of the food chain. So just to go out there and chase it, all I can ask for is an opportunity. And this year I've, I've been lucky enough to have been granted an opportunity down in Arizona and get after it and try and work my way up the food chain like I did here and, and try and make it as, uh, as successful of a career as I can. Well, that does it for the first episode of Ports Out of the Pilots of 2019. Be sure to catch us every month as we feature the University of Portland Athletics. You can also follow us on social media and be sure to visit PortlandPilots.com for all the latest news on the Pilots. See you next time.